the session on Wikipedia and academic research. And I'm going to turn my camera off as well. My name is Jennifer Rempel, and I'm the Information Literacy and Resource Access Librarian here at AU Library. You can see my contact information there. So here's what we're going to cover during this session today. It'll probably take about 30 minutes. So we'll go over library help. Um, I'll talk about what Wikipedia is. I'll talk about Wikipedia and traditional reference sources and how they compare. Um, I will spend some time on Wikipedia and your university assignments, as well as evaluating Wikipedia articles. And so I do have time um, for questions at the end, but also, of course, if you want to ask questions through microphone or through chat, that's fine too. You can ask th questions throughout the presentation as they come up, since it's a pretty small group today, so <laughs> that'll be just fine. Okay, so I do want to begin with a message that the library is here to help you. So again, as you mentioned, you're starting a new course in the spring. So it's good to have this information well in advance. So good for being here. I appreciate that. Um, to get more information about how to get in touch with us, you can go to our Contact Us page on the AU Library homepage. Um, the w library's web address is library.athabascau.ca, and I will quickly send a link to the homepage as well. Actually, I'll send two links uh, to the home page and our orientations page. The orientations page is where I will post the recording later on. So you can see the library webinar, or sorry, library home page, library orientations page, or library webinars. Okay, so um, for contact too, you can email us. You can give us a call during our business hours. Our business hours are 8.30 to 4.30 Mountain Time from Monday to Friday and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. And we have reference librarians on staff who can help you with detailed search questions. And we also have uh, very nice and friendly staff who can help you accessing materials. So getting books, getting articles, all that kind of stuff. So you can get in touch with us anytime you need any help at all. We do also offer live chat service. So that is three days a week, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, from 10.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. And you can see the little Ask Us chat link on the home page if you want to get in touch with us while we're live. Um, you can also see, and again, I sent you a link to the orientations page. That's where you'll find our upcoming webinars. So we have one on the 10th uh, that you can see. Um, and you can see this is also where I'm going to post a link to the recording to this session. So this uh, Wikipedia webinar will be recorded and posted on the library webinars page later on. But you can see our schedule there. And our next webinar, which I forgot to include a screenshot for, our next webinar is on February 10th, and it's called AU Has a Library, and it's all about learning how to use AU Library. It's kind of similar to the Hack the Library session, but it's a really useful one, too, if you want to learn more about general searching and navigating the library homepage. So I do have a question here. Um, we don't have a big group today, so I will just skip this over. Kind of just curious about what people use Wikipedia for. Uh, if you want to answer, you can go ahead, Marty, but you don't have to. You can just listen. <laughs> so. Yeah, sorry, just getting a little short of breath. But, uh, That's okay. I use, Wikipedia, I use Wikipedia basically just when I want to skim a brief overview, familiar, familiar myself with the topic and that sort of thing. Like, I don't think I would ever use it for actual research, but when I'm looking up a quick drug or when somebody comes into my ER and says, um, oh, I have Proteus syndrome, I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, I know what that is, and I quickly look it up on Wikipedia real quick. This I don't yep. look totally silly. I don't look totally silly. But a quick overview, a quick uh, mm -hmm. familiarization, that's it. Yeah, that's right, and that's and you're on the right track with that. That's definitely the case that, you know, we'll talk more about uh, using it for research, but yes, that's what people use it for generally is an overview of a topic, and it's actually pretty useful useful for that too. So yeah, I'll go into what Wikipedia is. Uh, most of you, or you are probably aware that it's an online open access free encyclopedia that anyone can contribute to. So this means that anyone with an internet connection can create, edit, or contribute to Wikipedia articles, although there are some editorial controls there, which we'll talk about too. Uh, so uh, Wikipedia is quite different from traditional proprietary encyclopedias, so like the Encyclopedia Britannica, that kind of thing, um, in many ways. So proprietary encyclopedias, so that is encyclop encyclopedias that you would purchase or that a library might own or subscribe to, typically feature articles that are written and edited by subject experts. And these experts will almost always have academic credentials that can be checked. So encyclopedia entries in traditional journals, reference sources, are usually heavily fact-checked and reviewed before they're published, so there's a lot of uh, carefulness in terms of how the information they present. 
Um, in addition, contributors are usually paid for their work. So while this means that information presented in an encyclopedia is usually very reliable, it also means that changes and updates cannot be made to entries as quickly as they can be made in Wikipedia. So Wikipedia articles, of course, may or may not be written by subject experts, and many articles are written by amateur experts or fans of a particular person or topic or genre or whatever. Um, because Wikipedia contributors do not use their real names, but use pseudonymous usernames, it's very difficult to check their academic credentials. So they might have them. I know a lot, a lot of academics do update Wikipedia pages. Um, we don't know who they are. And so although their contributions might be reliable, it might cast doubt on their subject, subject expertise because we don't know who's writing this content, really. So although Wikipedia articles can be quickly edited to reflect new information about a topic, this also means that Wikipedia articles are prone to the addition of false information or vandalism. So we'll discuss vandalism of Wikipedia articles in more detail later. So users' contributions to Wikipedia are monitored by other contributors who watch out for vandalism and changes made to articles that may make them more biased or inaccurate. And these are just some funny examples here about Spot being written by Hemingway and Emma Stone being an angel from heaven. These are not verifiable facts. They're not true. So somebody's changed these entries to say those things. So people do watch out for that stuff on Wikipedia and are careful about removing false information. Um, another uh, issue that Wikipedia acknowledges to be a problem on their site, as it is sort of in our culture generally, is systemic bias. This means that, according to Wikipedia, some cultures, topics, and perspectives tend to be underrepresented. So this includes gender, race, and social class bias, as well as bias in representing non-English, non-American, or non-European topics. Also, people who are unable to access the internet or use mobile devices or simply do not have time to do so are not as easily able to contribute to Wikipedia. So Wikipedia has their own systemic bias page, and that's where you can go to sort of find more information about how they rate their own website. So Wikipedia actually is pretty self-aware, <laughs> so uh, they do realize that there are issues with their platform and with their entries, but they do acknowledge that in their systemic bias page. So we'll talk about university, and, or sorry, Wikipedia and university assignments, and you're correct, Marty, that you really probably don't want to cite Wikipedia articles in your assignments or papers. So as you say, one of the first places many students and uh, in general individuals I do turn to Wikipedia, turn to information is for Wikipedia turn to for information is Wikipedia. So I'm often looking at Wikipedia as well. Um, there are, however, pros and cons to using Wikipedia during your academic studies. So do keep in mind as you listen to the rest of the presentation that, again, never rely too heavily on Wikipedia for your, uh, when you're carrying out your research. And it's a good idea not to cite Wikipedia articles as sources in your papers or assignments. In general, faculty are not looking for reference material in your reference list, right? They don't want encyclopedia entries, really. They want journal articles and books and papers about a topic. Um, they don't want material that's sort of a bland description, which is kind of what Wikipedia is and what general encyclopedia entries are. But especially coming from Wikipedia, where it's not considered a reliable source, you want to double check with instructors if you feel like you should cite Wikipedia in your assignment. But it's not a good idea. Check with your instructors if you need to or want to. Okay, I have a quick question. Can I interrupt or? Oh, yeah. No, yeah, go right ahead. Okay, so a trick that I use to my undergrads occasionally, I didn't use it all the time, but occasionally, was to go on Wikipedia, because a lot of Wikipedia information is cross-referenced. There yes. is like a sources page in the, base, in, in the bottom half of it. I would find the quote, fact, um, assertion, whatever, and then scroll down to see where that came from, and then mm -hmm. use that, because often that was open sourced. Now, there is, of course, uh, whether or not it came from a scholarly article, whether or not it was uh, recent enough within the last five years, etc. Are instructors looking for that, that we're using the source material? Or is it, as long as it fits the criteria, peer reviewed, relatively recent, is that acceptable? Yeah, what they're going to want, yeah, it's okay if you find a source in Wikipedia and then go to that, like, that's fine. Like, it's, it, and actually, yeah. I'm going to talk about that, too, because it is a good place for that. But, okay. yeah, and in, in, in general, when instructors are giving assignments, it depends on the instructor, on the course, or the assignment, all that stuff, but they will typically um, 
outline the parameters. So sometimes you can, you know, look at Wikipedia for ideas or for background information. But in general, yeah, they're they're going to want you to sort of to sort of branch out into um, articles and things. But yeah, it's totally okay to use it for sources. And actually, I'll talk about that a bit later. So yeah, you're using it the right way. It sounds like, which is good. <laughs> So okay. again, yeah. okay, fair enough. Sorry for the interruption. Yeah. Oh no, no, don't apologize at all. It's you can any questions you have, just just ask them and I'll answer them to the best of my ability. So yeah, as I said, it's generally fine to use Wikipedia articles as a starting point for your research. Like again, we'll talk about doing that. You really would want to branch out to scholarly materials, journal articles, and books. And it sounds like you're doing that already, so that's great. Um, Wikipedia actually has its own page on using Wikipedia in academia so for assignments for papers for research and all that stuff so um, they actually say themselves Wikipedia we are not a reliable source we're not considered a reliable source generally so that's interesting that they actually say that so th that's good to know um, I have posted the link to their Wikipedia and academic use website or uh, rather page and you can get more information there if you're curious but yeah like, like I said they're, they're pretty self-aware and they realize like we're an encyclopedia we're online we're crowdsourced not considered reliable, peer-reviewed. So I will go on to discuss in more detail how Wikipedia can be beneficial to your academic research, which we've already touched on a little bit. So again, as you say, it can help you get a general overview of your topic or collect useful background information. Because in general, people are pretty good about fact-checking stuff, uh, depending on the topic. So in this example here, W.E.B. Du Bois, this page is really well done. It contains extensive footnotes. As you can see, again, scrolling to the bottom, everything is noted and sourced, and it contains a references list as well. So you can, as you said, go to these sources and look them up, like if, they're, if it's a book or a journal article or whichever. And it contains a list of further readings and external links. So this is a very, very good web page that, again, you wouldn't want to cite it itself, but you can learn a lot about this person very easily and very quickly and then branch out to more information. And also, too, if you're looking up relatively uncontroversial, very simple things, Wikipedia is just fine. Uh, so in this example, the crystal structure of carbon is well known. It's not disputed as a fact. It's just, just considered factual. So this is okay to look at. But again, when referencing in your papers, you might want to be careful because you might want to go to a more academic source. So again, it's a good idea to verify. Even, I mean, not always. Like Information like this is usually fine. But if you want to verify things in Wikipedia, it's a really good idea to do that in an external source. So one resource that the library has is we have discipline-specific reference, reference, reference works, sorry, including dictionaries, encyclopedias, handbooks, and manuals. And that's how you can go and look up dictionaries and encyclopedias that are reliable. So on the library homepage, if you go to Find Resources, you can see the little arrow at the top. Click on resources by subject or title, and that will bring you to our browse resources page. So you can go by subject area, title, or by type. Under browse by type, you can find dictionaries and encyclopedias there, and you can find some resources that might be helpful for you. So like science encyclopedias. We have Oxford reference encyclopedias, which are really good. You can just type in a, a search term, like a reference word, uh, or a, a term that you need explication of, and it will search all of Oxford's reference materials. So there's a lot of useful material for that, and you can get in touch with us if you need more help with that kind of um, item. And here you'll see we have a selection of dictionaries and encyclopedias that you can find things on. Um, another very useful uh, uh, thing about Wikipedia is that you can use it to come up with useful search terms. It can be really challenging to come up with search terms for your topic or to get a handle on the scope of your topic, what exactly you want to talk about. So if you're having trouble thinking up search terms to use in, in the databases in the library, you might be helpful to read a Wikipedia article related to your topic. Again, that's part of the background information, information gathering. So for example, um, in this case, if you're doing research on neurological disorders, you can read Wikipedia's page on that and then get ideas for more narrow topics. So perhaps I'll decide to focus on nerve disorder or seizure, seizure disorders, right? So you can get more ideas from Wikipedia pages and it'll give you more information about what terms might be useful for you. And of course, you can always ask a librarian for help with that too. And of course, they do offer pretty extensive bibliographies in some of their, on some of their uh, articles. So in this case, for example, this was from an article on the history of India. 
It contains an extensive reference list and a list of, a list of sources that includes both scholarly books. I've kind of highlighted them here. You see that uh, Kenoyer book is Oxford University Press, scholarly and reliable. And this is an article from American Historical Review, also a reliable source. So you can see um, some Wikipedia articles have really good bibliographies that can get you started, as, you, as you've used as well. And that's totally fine. If you're going to cite American Historical Review articles in your paper, that's fine. No one needs to know that you found it on Wikipedia. <laughs> Just another place to gather information. Yeah, sorry to interrupt there. But yeah, that's oh, yeah. what I was sort of wondering is that, yes, I've used Wikipedia as sort of my own sort of search engine, for lack of a better term. Mm -hmm. I just didn't know, is it struck you to come back and say, oh, that article on social class or Proteus syndrome or whatever, oh, you got that off of Wikipedia. Well, yeah, but I actually went and found the real article. I just mm -hmm. sourced it through Wikipedia. I just didn't know our teachers instructors hunting, hunting that down. No, 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 it's fine. Um, I mean, if, as long as you're citing your sources, like, again, because people can come across information in a variety of ways. Like, you can find this information on the web. You can find it on a website. You can find it, actually, another good place to look is if you have a really useful article that you found in a journal, you can look at their reference list and, and track down further material. Like, what are they citing? So it's totally fine. An instructor is not going to check that. They're not going to, oh, this is on Wikipedia, how dare you? No, like, they're, they're fine. As yeah, long as you're studying okay. sources, yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah. Um, if you have questions about Wikipedia in terms of, like, if something's really useful that you found there that you think could be an addition to your paper or assignment, like, you can ask them. But in general, if you're just hmm. citing things you found through Wikipedia, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right. So, yeah, and so I do have a question now because um, I'm going to be talking about evaluating Wikipedia articles. In general, how might you evaluate? If you come across a Wikipedia article, how do you kind of test its reliability? I think just going back through, you know, is it a peer-reviewed article? Is it relatively recent, within five years? Do authors have their associations, affiliations, degrees listed, not just Joe Blow from Cosmopolitan or whatever? No, it's, you know doctor whatever through Mount Sinai on the insulin resistance or whatever. Mm -hmm. I feel that, you know, gives a lot more credence than Cosmopolitan and is written by Susie, Susie Homemaker or whatever um, pseudonym she's going by. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's exactly right. You want to make sure that uh, thing, people have their credentials all lined up and that it's reliable. It's tricky with Wikipedia, but there are actually some pretty good ways to evaluate articles. Um, authority is a hard one because we don't know who's writing them. Sometimes you can find that out, but in general, it's fairly anonymous. So some really good other, other ways. So that's a good way, though, is you do want to look at somebody's credentials. Do they know what they're talking about? For sure. But um, a really good way to uh, evaluate Wikipedia articles is looking at things like article quality, um, uh, featured articles, protected articles, vandalism, templates, revision histories, and talk pages. All of these sources can help you evaluate our, uh, Wikipedia articles really um, pretty, pretty thoroughly. So we'll start with article quality. So in general, the first thing you're going to notice about a Wikipedia page is there's little icons. Well, one of the first things is there's little icons at the top of the page there. And the icons tell you a lot about the quality of the article you're reading. So in this case, it has a little green button. And I've highlighted it here, kind of pulled it out. Uh, that green button indicates a good article. So a good article on Wikipedia is well-written and contains factually accurate information that's presented from a neutral point of view. So this is, a, this is considered a good article. So it's more reliable. Um, you can find out more about good articles. Again, Wikipedia has their own description of what makes a good article. And if you're interested in more detail, again, they are pretty good about providing documentation about the decisions they make and how they evaluate things. So good articles, you can find that criteria there if you're interested in further reading. They do, good articles have to be nominated as good by uh, their Wikipedia contributors, and they have to meet the criteria of having illustrations if possible, correct spelling and grammar, verifiable information, broad coverage, so neutrality, so as unbiased as possible, and stability. So stability means that these articles are not uh, subject to frequent editorial disputes or vandalism, as we'll see in some articles. And again, I posted a link there to Wikipedia's Good Articles page. Now, Wikipedia's best articles are featured articles, and I've already showed you one. The W.E.B. Du Bois article is uh, considered a um, 
very good article. So this is um, these are the best articles. These are featured articles, and featured articles, as you can see, are again a little little uh, at the top right corner there, a little bronze star. This means it's an exceptional article. Um, they've been judged by Wikipedia editors to be well researched, comprehensive, neutral, and well written. So you have good articles, and you have exceptional articles that are considered featured articles. And they're featured articles. Uh, again, you can find more criteria from Wikipedia itself, which I will also send to you in the chat. It's all like a lot of further reading if you're interested. Uh, okay, uh, oh, I just missed a little bit of that, sorry. And what featured articles, like good articles, featured articles must be nominated by Wikipedia contributors as such. So they do have a sort of editorial loosely, uh, a loose editorial body there. Um, featured articles meet all of the same criteria of good articles, but they're written to professional standards. They're considered professional level articles. Again, still unfortunately not peer reviewed, but really of high quality. And again, not that you want to cite them, but you know that they're more reliable than others. So again, um, many Wikipedia articles have extensive editing protections, and this is to um, usually due to vandalism. So as you can see, protected articles will have a little lock in the corner, as this one does, a little lock in the corner there on the top right hand of the page. Um, each lock is in a variety, the locks are in a variety of different colors, and they have a little symbol on them, and they, they mean a bunch of different things. Um, here you can see a brief description of what each um, of these locks means. So you can kind of look at that. Um, in brief, when you see a lock, it means the article is protected to varying degrees from being changed by contributors. Fully protected articles, as you can see at the top there, these can only be changed by Wikipedia administrators. So these are the people who run Wikipedia, essentially. While semi-protected articles, that's the third one down on the list there, these can only be edited by contributors who have registered confirmed Wikipedia accounts. So you should be kind of a super user. And those are the two most common, the gold and the gray, those are the two most common locks you'll see on Wikipedia articles. And again, I will post a link to their Wikipedia protection policy in case you're curious um, about that. So yeah, do remember vandalism, unfortunately, can be a big problem with Wikipedia articles. So vandalism occurs when a Wikipedia article is altered to include non-factual or biased information, information that has been inserted deliberately to insult the subject or create controversy, that's pretty common, um, or if a page is simply deleted or altered with malicious intent. So vandalism tends to be, it's not grammatical errors, it's not changing the layout, it's usually stuff that's on purpose and kind of nasty, typically, <laughs> or it's a joke, right? It's people kind of not taking things seriously. So, you know, some articles like Scientology, of course, a very controversial topic, is subject to repeat vandalism, so they protect it. And again, um, Wikipedia has their own information on vandalism, which I will send also. And you often hear news stories about that, like somebody will, will edit a famous political figure's Wikipedia account to say something funny. Okay, um, another useful way to find information about the reliability of a Wikipedia article is to look at the text box or template at the top of the page. So templates are designed to allow Wikipedia administra administrators, contributors, and readers to quickly see what problems an article might have and how these problems could be addressed by contributors. So here you see this example. The template here lets you know that it does not cite any sources at all. So this information hasn't been removed. It's been up for about eight years. <laughs> you see October 2012, but it's been sitting there for a long time. So it's not a reliable. I wouldn't even probably use this for background information because there's no sources at all. So it could be anything. It could be true. It could be not true, but we just don't know. Uh, sorry to interrupt there. Yeah, I, I ran across a few like articles that are considered like orphaned. No article links into it. No, and it doesn't link out of any article. Um, a book I read, I want to read about the author. He had his own page on Wikipedia, but it nothing linked to it. Nothing linked out of it. So I'm sure he probably created his own web page and put it up there. Well, that's right. Yeah, he probably did. And because with Wikipedia, you're not supposed to do that. Like they really, if it sounds yeah. like the person wrote it themselves, they'll they'll remove it. But yeah, I'm sure it happens a lot. You know, because it's it's anonymous. I'm just thinking about 
Yeah, that text box. That, so obviously somebody flagged it and said, look, there's no other links into it, no other links out of it. This mm -hmm. is an orphaned article. I forget the exact terminology, but it was something like that. Yeah, I, think, I think that's right. Yeah, I think that's what it's called. Yeah, it's just they're kind of just weird, random floating articles that you have to look up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an indicator that's probably not super reliable. Yeah. So this template here points out multiple problems with this page. Uh, pretty notable that it's considered to be unbalanced towards certain viewpoints. It seems to be biased, not accurate, not neutral. So this is a lot of problems. So you, you could read this one and maybe get some information, but you just don't know. And it tells you right off the top, like this is not reliable. So do be aware of that kind of thing. So it's good to take pay attention to these um, text boxes at the top. An article's revision history can also give you clues as to its reliability. So uh, what the revision history is, it's a record of every single change, no matter how small, that's ever been made to a Wikipedia article. So it's actually quite useful. Um, you can look at the revision history of an article by clicking on View History at the top right-hand corner of the page. And you can see here, if you click on oldest, you can see when the article was created. So this is the first ever edit to this page occurred on August 12th, 2011. So this page has been around for about 10 years. And every single, you can scroll through all that history. And this is a really controversial page. This person was controversial for a time. So you'll see a lot of changes here. Um, the revision history is quite extensive on this one. It's about a decade old. Because if you click on newest as well, you can see that the latest, and I, I updated this slide a couple days ago, but as far as a few days ago was concerned, it was updated on January 6th of this year. So it's still being updated, still being changed, still being checked. So that's it's pretty good to know. Uh, so here also you can see uh, when vandalism has occurred. So a lot of the vandalism occurred a couple of years ago, but you can see that the article is still extended, confirmed, protected because there's extensive vandalism happening to this page that editors had to go in and clean up all the time. So they said, you know what, we'll protect it so only certain people can edit it. And that's kind of, that's a pretty reasonable compromise, I think. <laughs> but yeah, so you can see that, that it is, has that little lock on there that it's extended, protected. So doesn't change too much. So it's fairly reliable, more so, but there's still a vandalism issue. So generally speaking, though, articles that um, you also see actually here, too, I'll point out, is you can actually, here's where you can see who updated the page, but still, these are kind of just anonymous names that you can't really do anything with. So you can't really get in touch with them or ask them questions, so it's, you can't confirm if they're reliable or not in terms of their, their being sources. So the view history page um, also allows you to see what changes have been made to the article and allows you to compare different versions of it as well. So you can do that too. If you click on cur there, you can see the current version while clicking on prev. shows you the previous version before it was edited. So you can see side by side. So here somebody just added a, a bunch of nonsense about tortoises and it was deleted. So there you can see that edit made there. It's kind of fun sometimes. Uh, a Wikipedia article's talk page is also very informative and can be kind of fun if you're looking at interesting topics like this one. So the talk page um, details discussions that the article contributors have had about what to include or what to remove from an article and why various editorial decisions were made. So you can find this by clicking on talk on the top left of a Wikipedia article. And you can see here it's kind of funny like a big discussion about fictional ducks and people are really concerned about it and really upset. So it's kind of interesting to see the talk page. Um, can also, again, indicate how controversial a topic is. This is a controversial topic here. So you can see here uh, why that's so in, in the text boxes at the top. Um, this also indicates what improvements or additions still need to be made to this page. So you can see that right away. And actually, uh, Wikipedia has their own list of controversial issues, which I'll also post. And it's kind of interesting to browse to see what people are fighting about. Some of them are surprising. <laughs> Atheism and Scientology, pretty controversial, but these ones, uh, yeah, some, some aren't so much. Yeah, well, I can imagine uh, fictional ducks is a pretty roaring subject, too, though, quite honestly. <laughs> exactly, yeah. People are really upset about Jemima Puddle Duck not being included, so that's kind of funny. Yeah, but people, yeah, you can get, uh, you know, hardcore fans of things getting really upset, so it's kind of amusing. <laughs> 
So yeah, there's that list of controversial issues you can check out. And then uh, basically, as we wrap up, the main things I want you to take away with, uh, from this presentation are, um, in general, when you're evaluating Wikipedia articles, keep a few questions in mind. So is there evidence of bias in the article? How controversial is the subject of the article? Um, does the information appear to be presented with a neutral tone? Is it fairly unbiased? Where does the information in the article come from? And do the article's contributors cite verifiable sources? And has the article been subject to repeat vandalism? If, it, if there's a lot of vandalism, it might not be a big deal because it could be protected, so then it's more safe. But it's good to check about vandalism, too, and make sure that you're not seeing something that's not true. OK, so no matter how reliable or trustworthy a Wikipedia article might be, do remember, as we said, that Wikipedia is a tool that should only be used as a launch pad to more extensive research in scholarly sources. So again, just to recap, it's fine to use Wikipedia for background information, to generate ideas and search terms, and to find further resources. But again, not a good idea to use Wikipedia as the basis of your research. You want to branch out. And of course, the library, as we're promoting this right now, has many more scholarly and academic resources for you to choose from. And these include books, ebooks, our many journal article databases, and more. So we do have another guide to uh, finding information on evaluating other web-based resources. We have a research guide called um, Internet Searching. So again, if you go to Get Help, and then Get Research Help, you'll find that in the list there of all our tutorials. So it's an internet searching guide. And it just shows you some information. And it needs to be updated a little bit, but the evaluating web information part is still fairly accurate. And we have a webinar um, we did a while ago on evaluating internet sources. This, all, a lot of this applies to Wikipedia as well, but you can, you can take a look at that resource too. And actually, I'll send you a link to our internet searching guide because we're also going to post some information. I'm going to update this section here, and we'll have the PowerPoint presentation as well as a checklist updated to this page probably today or tomorrow. Uh, probably tomorrow, actually, is more likely. But I'll send you the link to the evaluating web information guide. So again, just to uh, also remind you that we do have um, our webinars page where you can see our upcoming webinars. We're offering one on December, or sorry, on February 10th, <laughs> not December, February 10th already, uh, in the next few weeks, and that's just a general introduction to the library. We do have our drop-in sessions, which I mentioned, I didn't think I mentioned at the beginning, but I should have. We have drop-in sessions where you can kind of pop in and talk to a librarian in person. Well, not in, well sorry, no, in person over Teams. So you can chat with somebody on Teams through your camera. And uh, I'll send you a link to the webinars page as well, where you can find that information that are upcoming. And we're going to be updating our webinar schedule soon to include information about webinars coming up in the spring. We were, we're already planning a bunch for uh, spring semester. And also, um, I want to point you in the direction of our Wikipedia guide. We have our Internet Sources Guide. We also have an Assessing Wikipedia Articles Guide as well. Well, it's a, it's a Wikipedia guide with information about assessment. And we also have that checklist there. And I'll put the PowerPoint here as well. So this guide is also found on our Get Help pages. So I'll just send you that link. That's very useful. And finally, again, just to reiterate, for more help with the library, with your research, with anything uh, with your studies, I mean, questions that go to your professor might be directed there, but for information about searching and using the library, you can contact the library anytime. Um, again, we operate on business hours, Monday to Friday, 8.30 to 4.30, but you can call us, you can chat with us through live chat, you can email, all kinds of stuff. So lots of ways to get in touch through our contact page, and I think I've already sent the link to you in the chat box. And again, we do have those drop-in sessions. Those are, I think we changed the dates. Those are Tuesdays and Thursdays. So Tuesdays at 9 a.m., Thursdays at 3 p.m. And again, on the webinars page, you can find that schedule too. All right, um, as a final takeaway at the end of the presentation, there's a bit of a wrap-up checklist here. So this is a convenient, quick way if, uh, for you to just go through and say, how good is this article? How, what is the quality? Is it reliable? All kinds of things. So it's a little checklist here. That checklist is on our Wikipedia LibGuide as well. And that's it. So that's the end of the presentation on Wikipedia. Um, I hope you found it useful. <laughs> it was a small session today, but that's okay. And if you want to ask any questions, you can go right ahead.
No, no, I'm good. It was an uh, interesting session. I'm glad that it allowed me to um, do two things at once here. Awesome. Uh, yeah. you know, we're, I'm, I'm in Ontario, so it's, we're pretty locked down and can't go anywhere anyway. But anyway, yeah. so, no, no, perfect. Thank you. I'm just trying to get as much information as possible, getting warmed up for going back to school in right. May, I believe is when my course starts. So I just want to make sure I'm putting all the bricks in place to make sure I'm successful. And these webinars are awesome. They're perfect. I'm going to sign up for the, I signed up one last uh, week or a week or two ago today, February nice. 10th. I'll definitely be signing up and we'll awesome. uh, keep going. That's great. So, well, thank, thank you for attending today. Again, there's only two people, but that's fine. A small, small group is fine. But thank you for your questions too. And it's nice to meet you uh, over Teams. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Thanks. Okay. Uh, have a good day. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.